Hi, there's a vlog where I get to have people on with me again. And today I had the pleasure of being at Woden Crystal Lake Titanka High School. And I spoke to a, is it, it's an all school assembly, isn't it? Yes. An all school assembly, which is very exciting, very exciting. And it came courtesy of Lisa Plankle Grummer making a connection with Miss Blazer. Miss Blazer? Well, she had a class read my book. I should stop telling this story. <laughs> you tell the story, Gretchen. <laughs> this is Gretchen Thomas. Tell her, how did you end up reading Involuntary Joy? Uh, well, we have a class, I have, well, the current issues class has two students. Jamie Hoff, who at the moment is camera shy. She doesn't like being camera. <laughs> so she's hiding. And myself, Gretchen Thomas, as you know. <laughs> the and, Gretchen Thomas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, well... Jamie's English class, college English class, had Miss You can go with Joy. You can go with Joy. Okay. Had Joy come and talk about her book, and yeah. Miss Blazer in her current issues class decided that we had to read a book. So Jamie <laughs> offered up the involuntary Joy, and as we both knew Strauss through one way or another, we both agreed on it and. So we read the book. And I was thrilled, because how cool is that that they're reading it as a homework assignment? So kudos to Ms. Blazer. Thank you. And so how did it work out for you teaching? I thought it went really well. Um, we kind of, I hadn't read the book yet, so I read it along with the girls, and um, we talked about several different issues, talking about pregnancy and how life revolves, and then talking about how, how to have a child with multiple disabilities, and kind of your feelings going along with that, and what would you do in that situation? So looking at your feelings, Joy, and then going back and saying, okay, how would you handle this? What what would you have done? Would you have done something the same would you have differently? Do you think you would have handled it the same way? Would you have handled it as well as Joy did? Because um, I believe you handled everything very, very well. Um, and Every two graduates? Um, I don't think I would have been able to handle it that well. Um, but then also looking at kind of the family aspect. How does your life change, especially with your family, and how does your parents look at you? at you and your new child, and kind of that whole entire aspect. Cool. Okay, so Gretchen, hmm. what's one of the conversations you remember most about having, after you read the book? As you and Jamie and Ms. Blazer were talking, what conversation do you remember? Uh, probably how scared I would be, well, how scared, how yeah. nervous we would be if we had ended up having a child that was disabled. I basically stated that I do not believe I'd be as strong as you and be able to handle having a child that's disabled. Here, let me speak to that, if you allow me. Here's the secret. You really don't have a choice, guys. Life. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Life. You do not have a choice. So I am always complimented when somebody says, you handled it amazingly, and I don't think I could have handled it this, you know, as well as you did, but you actually never know. I mean, I had no idea how I was going to handle it. So the key is you're doing it all for your kid. So that's a pretty high ticket there. You don't want to mess up. You're, you're, you're responsible for another human being. So I'm going to bet. I hope you don't have to deal with something like that. But I'm going to bet that if you had to, you'd go, I'm doing this for this other human being. And I'm going to, you're, you're going to be fantastic at it. You would. And Jamie, too, I'm confident. <laughs> Frankly, you don't get another choice. You know what I mean? You're going to not mess up. Heavens. You saw in the book, I had some not good moments, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. It was like warts and all. The thing that was shocking to me was the way Mark's um, father in coming to the house and kind of how angry he was with Mark staying at home. And I was just, I was surprised on, that you laid it flat out, um, out on the table. And, then, and I just think that was interesting. I was kind of wondering how Mark's dad handled that after reading the book. Yeah. Um, very, it, well, I mean, <laughs> I did put it all out on the table. Interestingly enough, I let him know ahead of time about it. And what's really fascinating is he can't remember that. <laughs> he, can't re he can't remember that, n that night. And so I looked at Mark and I go, did, we, did I dream that? And he goes, no. And so when I wrote that chapter in particular, I had Mark read it. And Mark, that was exact, I mean, it, 
I wrote it exactly the way it played out. And um, you know, both of our families grieved. They were grieving too. They were grieving a loss of things they didn't get to see their kids do. So I think sometimes fear and grief show up like that. And I think had I not shared it, it would have been kind of dishonest. And I, and I think there's, they're a, a deep source of support now. So, I mean, they always have been. So, you know, we're not estranged from any family members that I know of. My mom was worried about how she was coming off in the book. She was worried I was going to give her a hard time because I took a lot of my anger early on out on my mom. Gosh, she always, ugh. She would hog him, and she would talk to his nurses and doctors before I did. You know, and like, oh. so she was worried about how I portray her. But yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Right. When we first started reading the book, we all commented on how, if we were to do a book of our own, how do the people we know how would they feel about us portraying being in the book? Being in the book. Yeah. And I think we had a bit of a laugh after that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'll tell you a secret. Um, if you have the first edition of the book, it has a different word in it than the second edition of the book. I did 500 first and then 500 again because the first 500 disappeared quickly. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, after reading the book, was upset about a word. <laughs> and it was, she wasn't upset about the chapter Bad Day because uh -huh. that's how that happened too. <laughs> but she was upset that I had described that she and her husband Greg had come home and delivered our packages and stuff. And I had used the word that the gifts had been tossed into the closet. And she goes, we were very careful about how we put them in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean like Daws. Right. You know, so I said, well, would you feel better if I printed again if I used the word place? She goes, I'd feel a lot better. <laughs> you get like the more recent one, it says and the gifts were placed in the closet. <laughs> so, so there you go. <laughs> but everything else stayed the same. So, yeah. Anything else? Not that I can think of. Well, I really, really, really enjoyed it. How, how many were here today? Ooh, maybe 60? 60? 60. 60. And Woden Crystal Lake Titanka, you are the? Tigers. Tigers. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So thank you to all the Woden Crystal Lake Titanka Tigers. Very attentive, very attentive. I appreciated it today. Thanks. <laughs>